Hey everyone, thanks for coming by Head First Fishing again. This is the final video in our 2016 How to Get Ready for Kingfish, and we're going to be talking about lures and baits. We've already covered rods and reels, we've covered lines, leaders, hooks. Now let's talk about the thing that makes the fish want to eat, and that's bait, that's lures. So let's go ahead and kick it off with one of our favorite lures. This would be the Rapala X Rap. 30 foot diver. This lure right here has got all kinds of battle scars on it. It's been hit by not only kingfish but barracudas, sharks, things of that nature. And you can control its speed and how far it dives by uh, boat speed. Uh, line up, have the line that's behind the boat, the size of the line. You can do a lot of different things with it, but it has a really, really good wiggle to it. Tracks good. Uh, just keep the weeds off of it when you're trolling. Check it every once in a while and it'll run really well. It's a really awesome bait. Man, this thing's got some battle scars on it for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have just annihilated this thing. Just this, the deep gouges in this bait is awesome. I've got two favorite patterns in this type of lure, and uh, you can probably find them in other lures, but this is the uh, baby dolphin fish or Dorado or Mahi or whatever you want to call it. Baby dolphin fish pattern. They, uh, a lot of different predators like to feed on those little juvenile chicken dolphin or peanut dolphin. Uh, that's the, the ones that are anywhere from uh, that big all the way up to maybe that big. They'll come up and just slice them in half. Uh, and kingfish are definitely uh, in line for that. So I like this color. The other color I like is a mackerel color, is a mackerel pattern. And that pattern works just about anywhere. It's a good looking color. Uh, Rapala puts a lot of flash in it. Um, has a little bit of a contrast and a, and a stripe on it. Uh, but it's just a general all around good pattern for color. And I, I generally keep those two in my box at all times. Um, but these lures can be trolled pretty quick. They can be trolled seven, eight, nine knots. Sure. And they'll keep on tracking. Um, I generally troll between five and seven. Uh, but sometimes a little bit faster is appropriate. Um, another favorite of mine, I know it's a favorite of yours too, is that Yozuri Crystal Minnow. Absolutely. The Yozuri Crystal Minnow is a really, really good lure. And, you know, that whole lineup is, is awesome. Um, but particularly, if I'm not trolling the Rapala, I'm trolling the Yozuri Crystal Minnow. And it's the medium diver pattern. Um, the deep, deep diver works great too. Uh, but I like the Yozuri Crystal Middle and the Deep Diver that goes about 15 to 20 feet. That seems to be kind of a kill zone for those kingfish. And you can you can tailor your spread to work the entire water column. If you're fishing 80 feet of water, maybe you want to be pulling a few of these that are 100 yards back. You want to be trolling some of those uh, some of those mid day mid depth baits a little closer to the boat, and then putting some of the uh, shallow running baits way way back. If, you, if you're marking bait at a certain depth, or you're marking fish at a certain depth, try to target that depth. These work really well in water over 50 feet deep. They don't work so well in water under 30 feet deep. Kingfish don't tend to sit on the bottom. You pull this in 30 feet, you're probably going to catch some nice gags. You might, you might catch some nice <laughs> gags. That's a whole other episode, but yeah, that's definitely something you can do with them. Um, and under, you know, under 40 feet of water... I like that mid-column bait, and I like those those surface plugs, if you will, that are running two to three feet down. Mm -hmm. And all of them, you want to be pulling them at least five, six miles an hour, um, but you you want to make sure you're trolling them at a speed where they're not spinning out yeah. and they're not losing control. Uh, you want a nice tight wiggle to them. Um, another you can little... tell, yeah, your rod tip is bouncing properly and oh, it's wiggling. Yeah. And it's tracking straight, you know, I don't have the plug circling and coming up to the top and all that. Yeah, if it gets hung up in grass, your rod tip's just nope. going to sit there. Just like you're pulling a skirt through the water. Um, skirted lures work fine too, but I really, really like pulling plugs. And I also like pulling shiny spoons and, and spoons casting irons too. Yep. So, they hit you know, it. instead of, instead of uh, putting a planer down or uh, a rigger ball down deep for for trolling spoons or trolling live bait, just tie one of these guys on and go. I mean, that's all there is to it. No no fuss, no mess. Just tie it on, put it back, and start trolling. Wait for the rod to go bzzz. Absolutely. Don't forget to put your clicker on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget it. 
So that's a that's a couple of different baits that we like to use, and we use that you know if we're trolling, we're that's what we're generally using is these diving plugs or some type of spoon or something like that. The benefit to artificials too is you can cover so much more water. Right. You know if you're out in a zone and you're looking for bait and you're looking for those fish, and they're not tightly packed over one single rack or one single edge, if you will. Um, you can cover so much more ground with artificials than you can with with live baits. You'll wash them out or kill live baits if you're doing anything more than maybe a knot and a half, two knots. Um, besides, maybe blue runners will beat the boat. But <laughs> if, if you're pulling live baits, you gotta 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 be in control of what they're doing and not pull them too fast. Yeah, you, you can't drag a bait faster than it's willing to swim naturally. You'll kill it. These guys are awesome for covering ground, and the bite going at ten knots is killer. Yep. And they catch variety too. They don't. They catch. They catch. Uh, you know everything from kingfish, amberjack, grouper. Sure, cobia, uh, tuna, sailfish. They all eat them. I've caught. I caught my first blue marlin on a Rapala diving lure. Believe it or not, we were out in the northern Gulf, out in the oil rigs area, some of the floating rigs out there. We were pulling for yellowfin, and we had a bite. It came off, kept on going, and then it came back for real this time, and it was a 250-pound blue marlin. Unbelievable. Uh, fought it with uh, out of harness and a cheap Walmart fighting belt, and I thought I was going to die, but we got it, um, and it came off a Rapala uh, X-Rap. Everything likes the X-Rap. Yep, love it. Sure. Um, if you are going to slow down, you're in an area where there are a bunch of fish, and you're going to pull live bait. You want to match the hatch. I mean, that's uh, that's just common sense anywhere in the world, no matter what you're fishing for. You want to throw what's there. Um, what we tend to have out here off the uh, St. Pete coast in autumn, October, November, a lot of threadfin herring, a lot of Spanish sardines, uh, a lot of scad, and Spanish mackerel. Those are my four favorite baits to throw. Spanish is probably my... Spanish mackerel is probably my, my favorite bait to troll out there. Put the big ones. For the big ones. You'd be surprised a 20-pounder will eat a 5-pound spanny. But um, if you're going to target bigger fish, I like bigger baits. I mean, that's that's you've heard that over and over and over again. Um, but a big Spanish mackerel behind the boat with three or four stingers in him is going to get eaten by something. The, the, he's not going to make it all day and not hook up mm -hmm. uh if you're looking for numbers of fish we got a bunch of schooling kingfish in this migratory rush that we have coming by our coast that are in that 8 to 15 18 pound range and those are really 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 easy to catch if you go out there you look for bait balls you sabiki up or you net some thread fins pop them behind the boat and figure eight and slow troll and work the zone where where the bait is i mean it, it's no simpler than matching the hatch. Um, you can certainly use anything that you are able to catch out there. Pumpkin seeds, which are Atlantic bumpers. Um, some people catch them on pinfish. Blue runner is always a favorite. Mm -hmm. You can buy ribbon fish. Yeah. Um, ribbon fish are definitely a good kingfish bait. They sure are. Anywhere in the world. Uh, we don't have too many of them around our bays, but you know, kingfish have seen them. They will eat them. Uh, some of the tournament guys go out there and pull big old giant uh, mullet, uh, ladyfish, again, leading back to the Spanish mackerel and the blue runners, big baits, big fish. You're not going to catch too many 40, 50 pounders on, on threadfin herring, greenbacks, but, yeah. um, you know, match the hatch. Anything out there in this mix, in this fall mix, is probably going to be a good bait if he's shiny. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's what it boils down to. If you can catch him and he's shiny... Kingfish is probably going to eat them out there. Yeah. The thing about it is these live baits is what these fish notice is, is this fish on your stinger rig is a little bit different than the ones and the rest of the schools out there. He's swimming and it's wriggling. It looks great, but he's kicking just a little bit different and looks wounded. He's struggling. He's not quite with the rest of the school of fish out there. He's probably yeah, on important. his own, you know, and that kingfish is like, hmm, do I want to try to dig out one of these thread fins out of this massive ball? Or do I want to eat this redfin over here that's swimming uh, kind of crazy looking and he's not with his buddies? What's going on? <laughs> I think I'm going to go over here and whack, knock, you know, nail him. Yeah. And that's it. Bait ball up is a defensive mechanism. Yeah. Nothing more. Safety in numbers. The stragglers get eaten. And that's what, you're, that's what you're creating. You pin one on, you put him behind the boat, he's a straggler. You don't want him out in the middle of nowhere. You want him around those schools. Um, 
you don't want to throw him in the middle of the schools, but if you're doing it properly and you're trolling the periphery of those schools, he's going to get eaten, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially this time of year. Water temp's just getting right. I think it's about 82, 83 out there. Once it falls into about that 80 range, 78, it's going to be lights out on fire. And right now we've got Bonita out there in the bay. We've got Spanish mackerel. We've got some kings that have moved in. Um, our red ma our red mackerel, our red mackerel, <laughs> our red fish, our red our, salmon, our red drum are out there <laughs> schooled up, and they may create the same kind of mess and may lay on the surface as the Spanish and the Medina do. Sure, you may see them on the way offshore. Um, so don't don't miss an opportunity to catch something that only happens once or twice a year. Keep an eye out as you're running out there. These redfish will push up balls of bait too create a, a white water and uh, extremely user friendly. If you've got a casting spoon or <laughs> anything rigged up with a hook on it that you can fire out there, they'll get eaten. Yep. Um, I think redfish are just not in a, in a surface or a bottom feeder in particular. People say they're bottom feeders. They do plenty of that, but man, they come off the top of the water and just frenzy sometimes. They will. Big schools and they hit top water plugs and lures moving through the middle. I mean, they're just... I think redfish are just kind of just whatever. They just don't care. They're well evolved. They fish. just don't care. <laughs> we know what kingfish are doing. They're hauling butt. They're uh -huh. going to eat it. Yep. Uh, but yeah, this time of year is great. You, you can catch anything out there on a variety of different baits. As I said my, my favorite baits are Spanish mackerel. Um, and for numbers, threadfin herring and big scale sardines are tough to beat. Definitely, I agree. That's what most people will be going to load their live wells with those uh, scale sardines and thread fins. And you catch most of your fish on that. And that's kind of like the go-to bait. But there's uh, definitely some baits out there that will produce fish and bigger fish a little bit more consistently than your schooly bait fish. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think that just about covers it. And that concludes our series on getting ready for King Mackerel. Thanks for coming by Head First Fishing. Thanks for watching me and Captain Scott Sabor. Got a lot more content coming at you. Just stay tuned, watch for more uploads, and we'll catch you later.